Step six is where the team brainstorms all the causes of the problem. We do this by using post-it notes and writing down all the reasons of the causes that people can think of that contribute to the problem. The flow chart will often help you think about some of the causes. And what you've got to make sure you do here is don't brainstorm the solutions, but focus in on the causes of the problem. Sometimes people start to think about solutions here or change concepts. What you really must focus in on is the causes of the problem. Now we use post-it notes to do this. So every participant gets a pad of post-it notes and they write on the post-it note the reason or the causes they can think of that contribute to a problem. And you use one idea or phrase per post-it note and write it as a phrase. Don't just use say the word education, say what's wrong with education. Each participant uses as many post-it notes as they need and you do it in silence to cut through what we call the authority gradient because we want everyone to have an equal voice here. So if any, if you have someone who dominates in your team, they will actually have an equal voice with people who are more quiet. And you need to put the post-it notes on a flat surface. So usually we'd put it down on the driver diagram that you've started. When you're brainstorming, you can also use a technique called the five whys to help you get to the root cause of the problem. How the five whys works is that you state the problem and ask why does it exist? Then you document the answer and ask why does it exist and repeat five or more times until you get to the root cause. So you can use this technique silently while you're brainstorming. So with David, we brainstormed the, all the causes of why David is overweight. And this is what we came up with. And we put all our post-it notes onto a flat piece of paper. It's hard to read. So these are some of the causes of David being overweight. He eats fried food. He sits at his desk all day. He takes the lift and never uses the stairs. He doesn't eat many low calorie foods. He only goes to the gym once a month and he puts too much food on his plate at meal times. So they're some of the causes of David being overweight. Step seven is where we categorize the causes and assign headings. So the team members arrange all the causes, meaning the post-it notes, into what we call an affinity diagram. So they read all the post-it notes and they organize them into logical categories and then assign a heading to each category. And this is called an affinity diagram and they generally have between two to eight categories. So with David, we looked at all his post-it notes and there were basically two categories, one around calories and one about exercise. At this stage, you need to reread all the post-it notes and remove any absolute double ups, so things that are exactly the same. But also you might find there are some things that you can collapse together. But just make sure there's consensus in the team about what you um, collapse together. With the driver diagram, the category headings become your primary drivers and the causes are your secondary drivers. And what you'll find is a driver diagram is like an affinity diagram on its side. So this is the affinity diagram we have with David's case. And if you spin it around on its side and put it into two columns, that's where you form the driver diagram. And here you have your driver diagram. And again, just double check that you've removed any double ups and collapsed any similar issues together. Okay, step number eight is where we define each primary and secondary driver. This is actually an optional step and you don't have to do it. You can leave the post-it notes as they were when you brainstorm them. Or you can actually reword the, say, the primary drivers as measurable improvement or action statements to just show how they actually affect the aim or how they improve. So for calories, what has David got to do with calories to ensure that he loses weight? What he has to do is decrease his calorie intake. So this is where we just reword the primary driver. Also, what has David got to do with exercise to, to ensure that he loses 40 kilos? He's got to increase his exercise to burn more calories. So this is just flipping of the primary drivers, the wording of the primary drivers to show how they'll affect the aim. As I said before, this is an optional step. You can also do this with the secondary drivers where you just change the wording to be more positive action statements. So eat fried food, what David's got to do to lose weight is to eat less fried food. He only goes to the gym once a month. What he's got to do is go to the gym more. Puts too much food on his plate at meal times. He's going to reduce the volume of food eaten. Doesn't eat many low calorie foods. He's got to eat more low calorie foods. And if he does these, that means he'll lose weight. 
So back to the driver diagram, what you do is you would put the primary drivers, the reworded primary drivers into your driver diagram and also draw the relationship arrows to the aim statement. And then you need to put in your secondary drivers and their relationship arrows to the primary drivers. And what you'll find is that there'll be some secondary drivers have a relationship to one or more of the primary drivers. For example, if David reduces alcohol intake, that will help him to decrease his calorie intake. But also, if he reduces his alcohol intake, he's probably more likely to go and exercise in the evening or during the day. What you also need to do is just double check that you've got all your drivers. So think about this as a team and ask questions like, is there anything else that we could do to improve or impact our aim? Or what else do we need to do to reach our goal? Or another question you could ask, is there anything else that could go wrong to prevent us from reaching our aim? So you just want to make sure that you've got all the primary drivers and the secondary drivers in your driver diagram. So just ask these questions to make sure that you've covered everything. For example, with David, you could have a whole nother primary driver about his mental state and flowing from that would be some secondary drivers. So just ask these questions just to make sure that your driver diagram is completely thorough. It's your turn again now. So on your table, each of you are to find your driver diagram cheat sheet again and you need to work through steps six to eight. So step, step six is where the team brainstorms all the causes of the problem and you use post-it notes and you do this in silence. Just make sure that you focus in on the causes of the problem. So brainstorm the causes of the problem, not solutions or change concepts because we deal with them later on. And you place all the post-it notes that you're brainstorming onto the butcher's paper, which has the driver diagram that you've drafted up. Step seven is when you form an affinity diagram. That's where you look at all the post-it notes and you sort them into logical categories or themes. And then you assign a heading to each of these categories. So the category headings, they become your primary drivers. And the causes under each category heading, they become your secondary drivers. You need to look at all the post-it notes at this stage and remove any double-ups. And if there's anything that's similar that you think as a team could be collapsed together, do so. But on the butcher's paper, you need to place the primary drivers in the second column and the secondary drivers in the third column and draw in the relationship arrows from right to left. So the secondary drivers draw relationship arrows to the relevant primary drivers and then the primary driver to the aim statement. And step number eight, which is an optional step, is where you can redefine each primary and secondary driver. So for the purposes of this workshop, just read word each of the primary drivers. So look at the primary driver's wording and flip it around to a positive measurable action statement to describe how it will affect the aim statement. This is basically what your driver diagram will be looking like on the butcher's paper. So in the first column, you've got the problem, the aim and the team. The second column, you have your primary drivers and the third column, you have your secondary drivers. Remember the arrows, the relationship arrows go from right to left, from the secondary drivers to the relevant primary drivers, and then from the primary drivers to the aim statement. Also remember to look at those post-it notes and remove any double ups and collapse any similar issues together. But make sure the team absolutely agrees on anything that you remove and anything that you collapse together.